Hi guys. Promised you guys a video on my bug out bag. And as a broke person, my stuff can't cost hundreds of dollars like a lot of people's costs. I picked up this particular bag. It's a day cane bag. I got it at Goodwill. Go on, Gizzy, go let him. That's my doom dog. Um, I got it at Goodwill for $4. Okay, it needed a couple of zipper pulls, but the zippers were fine. That was it. <clears throat> I believe I checked online at the time I got it, and we were going for something like 200 euro or something like that. It was a very expensive bag. So um, I feel like I got a killer deal on just the bag alone. A lot of my stuff has been bought, used, or secondhand. Um, as somebody that has to really watch their money, I have to do that. Not everybody can prep at all, and some people can prep only a little bits like I do. So anyway, here it is, my bag tour. First and foremost, I've got a stainless steel water bottle, okay? It is just a, a used one I picked up at Goodwill for like a dollar, okay? Um, it's got the nice wider mouth where you can actually hang it over a fire if you need to. And it works just fine. I'm going to set the stuff off to the side as I get it out. And that's in this little pocket. Now this little pocket has just a few things. It's got a couple of bandanas. It's got a headlamp. And it's got a lensatic compass. A little bit better. It's an engineering compass. But you know what? It'll work. This right here I bought new. I think it was like, I don't know, 6 or $8. It wasn't very much. Um, you can either use it like this and hold it up to your cheek or you can hold it in the center of your body. Um, but the main thing is to know which way is north, south, east, and west. This I bought new, but it was on clearance. I think I paid $6 for it. Um, I don't have any batteries in it right now, but I do put batteries. I got these for free when I had to go down to Harbor Freight and buy something. I would put batteries in it the moment I needed it. Now, you guys don't want to watch me. You want to watch the bag. So, let's open up the second front compartment. And in here, I have a small alcohol stove. Again, I bought it at Goodwill. It cost me a dollar. Okay? It's got a little wick in there. It screws up and down. This part unscrews. It'll unscrew eventually. Here we go, see? Now I don't have any alcohol in here yet because I didn't want to put something liquid in there yet. I have this knife, it's an old timer, it's a skin and knife. This I bought new, it cost me $20, okay? Figure if I have to be skinning any game, then I'm gonna need something pretty sharp with a curved blade so that I don't gouge the hide. I love this knife. I have a hat. Uh, this one here, again, I picked up at a used place. It's got one of those little things that cover the back of your neck from the sun. And it's adjustable. You can make it tighter or looser. And this right here, you can, it, 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 it has a clip where you can clip it onto your jacket. But my jacket, of course, doesn't have the other end of this little clip, so this is kind of useless. I have... A Mora carbon steel. It's a Mora. Yeah, it's a Mora carbon steel blade. Uh, I don't have a real good blade yet, like maybe a K bar or something like that. But this one here is super sharp. It's got a plastic sheath. This would. Uh, this is what I would use for most tasks, so that I didn't mess up my other knives. I have. A pair of binoculars. Um, these were given to me by a friend. They're Carson. They're 8 times 21. Okay. Um, in case I need to see long distance. Duct tape. I just took a roll and took a hammer and flattened it and put, put a ranger band around it to keep it flat. Okay. So that it would take up less space in my bag. I have some hand warmers. Um, if it ends up being very, very cold, you know you're going to really want something to keep your hands and stuff warm while you're traveling. 
I have this little bag right here. And this has got a couple of things in it. In case I come across bottles or something and I need, I need to uh, be able to stop them up. Now this is like for a bar. It will leak out the top. But if I need something to stop up the bottle where nothing can crawl in it, it does have this little flap where it will hold it down. And then I have one of these. It's a wine bottle stopper. You guys probably saw that in my other video. Now this, the red band around it is just so I don't lose track of it. This is one of those uh, things that, that do the... Uh, center of the tire fill spout, the, the valve. You can tighten or loosen a valve with one of these in case you have to fix a tire. Or in case you have to disable the tire without ruining it. You can just unscrew the valve and whoever you don't want following you won't follow you. Up here, I have a small gun cleaning kit. I've got, you know, the different things, you know, the different scrubbers and swabs, and I've got some, uh, I've got some patches and a brush and the different things that are necessary. I also have a pair of earplugs and a clean, and, le and a lens cleaning cloth, because just because it was handy and it was a good spot to stick it. I think that's it. That's it in that one. Now we're going to go to the main compartment. Now keep in mind, my bug out bag changes pretty regular, okay? Um, it doesn't always stay the same because as seasons change, as my needs change, my bag changes. Which as it is as it should be that way. You shouldn't have just a static bag and five years ago you needed to, I don't know, maybe you needed moleskin because you had tender feet, but maybe five years ago you didn't have tender feet but now your feet have gotten soft and you need mole skin when you hike okay so you have to keep that into consideration when you're building your bag that it may have to change first thing out of here is a collapsible bucket you gotta have containers Dave Canterbury speaks of a the five C's and and I agree with him okay I got a lot of my tips from his channel as a matter of fact I got a lot of tips from a lot of channels he was one of them <coughs> but I've got a collapsible bucket pretty good size okay I had bought some cheaper ones online I actually got this one um, in a bag of tack I bought at an auction believe it or not um, I had bought some collapsible buckets online that had like the thicker ring around the top and a bale handle and stuff like that first time I used it it broke very first time I used it I was hauling some dirt with it and I only had it about four inches of dirt in the bottom of this thing it really wasn't that much and it it just broke. It just fell apart. And I went, well, that was a bad bad thing to buy. So anyway, be careful what you buy. Some things you do have to get better quality and some you don't. Okay. Now in here, this bag is, I'm not going to pull it out and show you because it's just two pair of underwear and two pair of wool socks. Okay. You got to have extra socks. Because if you're hiking and your feet get sweaty or if you have to wade through a stream and your feet get wet, you're going to need dry socks. I squished them down really, really hard to fit them into this because wool socks are kind of, you know, they're puffy and, and soft. So, now here I've got a Sawyer water filter. It's got everything it needs. Uh, it's got the, the syringe for the back flushing. It's got the straw and the squeeze bag. It's brand new. It's never been used. I keep it in this baggie just to keep it from getting dirty. Next I have an army canteen with a canteen cup. I don't have any liquids in these now because I'm not going to leave anything liquid in the bag if I'm not really using it. Um, it would only take me a second to grab it out of the top of the bag and fill it. Okay. Of course, this right here, you can heat water with it and whatnot. Um, but I'll probably eventually get one of those canteen carriers that you put on your waist so that I can get it out of the bag. That's the thing is it's in the bag and the bag only has so much room. Now the next thing I have is a bush pot. Now this can be used for lots of things, boiling water, cooking food, uh, making coffee, anything you need. Now David Canterbury sells one, not this one. This one I found at, again, a thrift store. It's got a nice lid on it, okay? Um, it's got a handle you can use it to pour and of course the bale handle you can hang it 
Now, inside the bush pot, I have several things. First of all, I have a Kevlar glove. Okay? This glove is for if I have to use a knife, I put this one on my left hand. And then I use the knife with my right because I'm right handed. And if I have to skin game, I don't want to cut myself. You know? So. This is a good thing for me to have because I'm kind of klutzy in that regard. And I really don't want to get a bad cut that could possibly get infected in a shit hit the fan situation. Now this is completely full of bullion cubes, okay, um, for making soups and stews and things. I really don't have, I don't have any other food in my bag yet. I'm actually making up a second bag, which I'll show you. I'll show that to you probably tomorrow or the next day so that uh, you guys can see what my add-on bag is. There's, I have like a three or four bag system, okay? Because um, not everything's gonna fit in one pack, okay? But this is bullion cubes, and I keep those in here just because if I need a soup or something, I can, I can have that. Next is a tea ball. It's aluminum. I think I paid 25 cents for it. I could put coffee in here. I can put herbs in here. Let's say if I had wanted to use some herbal medicine and need to make a tea out of whatever. Okay, passion flower or, or chamomile or, or pine needle or whatever the case may be. I could put it in here and not have to strain it out later. Now, I do have a strainer. Okay, this came out of another pour over coffee pot that I had. Uh, I still have it actually, but I wanted the bigger pot, so I, but I didn't want two pots. So I just robbed the strainer out of it. And the other pot, I think I paid a dollar for it. And this one here, I think I paid like three dollars for it was it not very much okay but I put that in the bottom so I have it all here actually I could put these in there too probably but we'll deal with that later but a bush pot's a good thing to have There's a lot of things you can do with that okay now the next thing I have and this is the last of my cookware is I've got this little bitty stainless steel set with a lid now this bottom one is a strainer, and the top, uh, or this top one is a strainer, and the bottom one is like if you steamed something. Um, this would be good to strain a lot of things out. You could put your bandana over the top of it, push it down in here, scoop up the water and pour it through. Okay. And it's very, very small, and it saves a lot of space. It's very compact. I actually think it was a kid's play set, because there was a little tiny wok and a little tiny skillet with it, which is over there. Um, but those don't go in my bag, because I don't think I can use those. The next thing is, is this kit right here. And this is for hunting game. This is a heavy-duty knife. It's got a gut hook on it. It's never been used. It's uber sharp but I don't want to touch that too much. And then the other part is an ax. Now this is a bone ax, but you know what? It would work for chopping wood if I needed it, okay? And it comes in this little case that can be actually hung on your belt so that if you wanted to take it with you when you went out, you could carry it with you easily. Next thing in here is my fire starting kit. Now I got it in a red Ziploc American coach bag. I used to work for them. Um, it's like a bank bag, okay, and I keep it as it's red so that I can easily spot it. Now in here I've got some charred material. I have a tin full of nothing but pine tree sap, okay. I have one of these, this is a magnesium fire starter, it's got the little striker. I have one of these ever matches or whatever they're called. Um, this one here, you put, if I get the lid on real tight, in, the, in here you put lighter fluid like you'd use for Zippo. And then here, oops, there we go. And that's how you light it. And it's got this little, a little flint striker light, like bar on the side. This is not a permanent thing. You know what? That lighter actually, that 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 flame actually burns quite a while because that the wick goes all the way up in this little post, so it, it has a little bit of time where you can get something started. I also have in here two brand spanking new Bic lighters. 
two ferrocerium rods, one with a handle. Then I have an extra striker and a P38 on this one. Now you guys remember my last video where I showed you my uh, EDC get home bag. Now that also had a ferrocerium rod and all that kind of stuff in it. Uh, fire to me is a very, very, very important item. If you can't get a fire, you're going to freeze to death. Um, if you can't get a fire, you might not be able to keep bears and mountain lions away. Uh, if you don't have a fire, you can't boil your water, cook your food, anything. Fire is to me is extremely important, which is why I have such an extensive fire kit. Next thing is a wool neck gaiter. Okay? Goes around your neck, keeps your neck warm. You can pull it up partially over your head. You can use it for a lot of things, but it's solid wool, army issue. I bought it when I was back in... Uh, in uh, Akron, there was a there was a, a military surplus place. I got that, and I also got this extreme cold weather military parka right here, which I wore for one winter when I was up in Ohio, and it worked great. Oh, I was toasty warm in it. It was awesome. If you guys ever want to buy a coat that's for sure going to keep you warm, that's the that's the ticket right there, guaranteed. That thing is super warm. Now in here, I also have a folding saw. This one is not a very good quality of one, okay? But it would get me by in an emergency. In my other kit, I'll show you whatever I, whatever else I have. But just for my shit hits the fan, grab and go bag, I have this. I also have two pair of gloves. Oops, where's the other one? I have a pair of white cotton gloves, which are good glove liners. And I have a pair of leather gloves for if I'm handling access saws, anything that might possibly damage my hands. And last but not least in here, I have a belt. It's one of those army issue belts. You can even make a tourniquet out of this one, okay? There you go, and there's that. Now that's my bag. What else is supposed to go in there? Oh, I don't. what I don't have in the bag that's going in the bag is a little add-on um, uh, first aid kit. The first aid kit is a complementary kit to the one that was in my EDC bag, okay? Now, the one that's going to be on this, I have to hook it off to the outside, which is fine. Um, <coughs> it's going to have in there, it's going to have a snake bite kit, uh, aspirins, Tylenols, any kind of medications I would need, like maybe blood pressure medicine, or antihistamines, or antidiarrheal, or anti-nausea, um, all kinds of different medications, and it's about this, it's about twice the size of this. It's one of those, it's one of those uh, little kits that they use, like to put a travel kit to put your uh, toiletries in. The zipper that goes around the top. Guys use them mostly. Anyway, it's about it's that size, and it would make an excellent first aid kit once I get it put together. It's actually in the bedroom, and I'm in the process of putting it together now. Um, that's going to go attached to this. It all, it, 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 almost everything in here is complementary to my everyday carry bag, which is right here. Um, my third and fourth bag are going to be like. Duffel, small duffel type bags. And in there is going to be stuff that I don't have in my bag, like cordage, um, a tarp, uh, anything else, food, things like that I might need. Now right here, I have my sleeve system. I have a cheap, cheesy $20 bag. Yeah, I know it's a crappy bag, but it's what I have. And I got it for, it's on sale for 17 or something like that. That wool blanket, I bought at the, at the thrift store, and it's a solid wool blanket. I got a really good deal on it. I paid $2 for it. And then the wooby up top is an extra one that my son had. Um, the, uh, the cats scratched up a corner of it, and so he got himself another one so that when he got, when they looked at all of his gear at work, he wouldn't get dinged on it. So he gave me the old one. And those three items are my sleep system as of right now. Um, I did have a discussion with my son going to have, I'm going to get an MSS sleep system, the three or the three bag thing with the outer Gore-Tex type bag, the cold weather bag, and the other bag, and they all fit inside of each other. Uh, I am going to get one of those, 
someday. Now over there is my poncho. Uh, I had bought that about 10 years ago. Uh, I got it from cheaperthandirt.com. I think it was cheaperthandirt.com, yeah. And at the time it was $14.99. I think they're like $29 now. But I had bought two or three of them and that's the only one that I can find. So I guess that's the only one I have left after getting moved and everything so many times. But it's a good solid military poncho. It doesn't have any holes, doesn't leak, it works fine. Uh, that'll also be attached on the outside of my pack because there is no sense of having something like that down at the bottom of your pack. If the skies open up and start raining, you want to get everything covered up right away. And also, excuse me for walking around behind the camera, I have several other items that are going to be in or on my stuff when we get ready to go somewhere. Now, I live in the desert. Water is a big thing. I had originally decided to use this canteen when my son gave me the other one. Okay, He gave me this one about 10 minutes after I decided to use that one. So seriously cool. But this one would be a good addition. Uh, if you are traveling, say I live in the desert, like I said before, and water is scarce. You have to carry a lot of water with you because it's not just everywhere. So if a person were to be able to take the pot, strain any water that's found, boil it, you could fill up this one and this one and the water bottle and have enough water to get me someplace. Because uh, that's quite a bit. That's almost, that's right at a gallon of water, pretty handy. Which is about eight pounds all by itself. So weight is an issue. This entire setup, not counting water, okay, uh, dry the way it is with everything empty, probably weighs in the neighborhood of 22 pounds. It's not very heavy. Go on, cat, get it. Hang on. She's going to knock the camera over. <laughs> now this was, whoop, not this. This was a bag that I had when I had a motorcycle that went over the top of the bags in, oops, got wet, in my, uh, on my motorcycle. I had some luggage that would fit on the, tied to the back of it. This would go over the top of it to keep the rain off. This right here, I can put this over my bag, boom, rain protection. I also have this larger duffel bag, which I plan to keep on hand. It's also rain water, well, I guess it's not waterproof because it's not completely plastic, but it's extremely water resistant. And I can put my jacket and my sleep system, anything else in here that I feel I need to keep dry. Which I plan on when I roll up my sleeping bag and everything, put it all together. I plan on putting it in this, rolling it up, and then attaching it to the pack. This right here is a grill cover. Haven't figured out what I'm going to use this for, though. But it's very large. It would actually make a really good ground cloth. Uh, to keep moisture from seeping up from the bottom into my sleeping bag or as a cover. I also have a uh, I have a, a hammock. It's a pretty decent one too. Uh, I got it at one of those places that buys pallets of returned merchandise and there was nothing wrong with the hammock. Um, seven dollars was it? Yeah, I think it was seven dollars. No, 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 no. It was seven dollars. I got it for five because I made him an offer. This would make a real good cover to go over the top of that because it's pretty long, actually. I don't have a good tarp yet, except for canvas tarp, which is uber heavy. Uh, now, it is a good tarp, but carrying it with me, just the tarp itself weighs about four or five pounds all by itself. It's a heavy canvas tarp. Uh, I might not want to take that with me. I want to get one of those sill nylon tarps is what I'm shooting for. If I could get me two of those, they don't weigh hardly anything. They pack up really small and they're waterproof. So we'll get one of those. Over there I have all my uh, cordage, excuse me, in here. And this is going to go, I shouldn't even show you this because it's supposed to be in the other video. But one of the things I wanted to show you was this light. Now it's got two clamps, you hook it onto a battery and then the light works. Mechanics use this. Okay, it weighs mm, not as much as a can of soda, not even. Okay, and then I have different things in here that I'm going to be actually uh, actually showcasing on my add-on bag, because light is important. This I could actually slip in here if I wanted to. I did have a little extra room, I could do that. Well guys, I think I've made a mess of the living room quite 
well today. <laughs> it's pretty messed up right now. Uh, my last thoughts being, though, that if you are worried about the Grand Solar Minimum, if you are worried about uber cold weather, you definitely need to get a jacket like this. You want something that goes down below your butt to keep the tops of your legs and your butt warm. Because if your butt's warm, a lot of you is pretty warm. Girls understand what I'm talking about. Uh, it's got the hood with the fur trim. It's not real fur. It's fake fur. But long sleeve, big deep pockets. Um, and it is water resistant. I have some spray I'm going to actually coat it with that's supposed to make it waterproof. It's supposed to dry, dry where you can't see it. It's in the bedroom. I just had to send it off to get it clean because I'd worn it for about a month and I didn't want to store it without it being dry clean so I went and set it off to have it be dry clean so that when I got it back it would be ready to go again. But even if that isn't, that sleep system isn't heavy enough to keep me warm in really cold weather, there are other things that I have with me that will, like the jacket, um, the wool neck gaiter, the gloves, the wool socks. Uh, I've got this poncho that can go over the top of me to keep wind from sucking any heat away. I can be <coughs> warm to the point of sweating with these items if I were to layer them all on. Well, I think that's about it, guys. I am going to have a lighter weight jacket to go with this stuff because if you're hiking along and it's 35, 40 degrees and you put on that heavy coat and you're moving, you're going to sweat in no time because that thing really is that warm. Uh, so I'm going to plan on having a lighter weight jacket with me that I can wear for medium cold temperatures. And this right here will be rolled up with my sleeping bag. It's going to be a pretty good sized bundle. It'll be attached to the back of this thing. But it's going to be there. And you know, even if it was in the spring or summer, I would still take that with me. Because you know what? If things are that bad and you feel like you got a bug out, it's going to eventually become winter. Eventually, you're going to need that coat. And who knows what kind of condition anything is going to be in if you had to go scavenge for it. So having the, a really good solid piece of kit right there is very important. I mean, you don't have to spend... I spent $100 on this jacket, okay? Uh, I, had a, I had a little extra money at the time. I put it on layaway. But uh, I spent $100 on that jacket. It was the best $100 I think I've spent in years. You can buy heavy coats. You can buy good solid coats at any thrift store for between 3 to $10. I mean, really. A lot of people think, oh, I'll never buy at a thrift store. Well, you know what? There's a lot of stuff in those thrift stores that are worth the money. Uh, this bush pot, for example, they're like $39. You go to buy one. I had practically nothing in it. Uh, the hat, you know, it was probably a $10 hat. I got it super cheap. This light, I know that this light probably cost some mechanic at one point $80 or $90, and I paid $5 for it. I shop around. None of my kit's expensive. Nothing in here is super uber expensive. That jacket is the most expensive item, and that's because it's cover. It's protection from the elements. You gotta have that. If you don't have protection from the elements in three hours, you're dead. You know, the rule of threes, three, eight, three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, three weeks without food, you know. Anyway, that's my kit, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If there's anything in my kit that you think is unnecessary or just crappy, let me know. Uh, don't be mean about it, though. Uh, if there's anything you think I need to add to my kit, please put that in there because there are, I'm always looking for good ideas. I watch a lot of different survival channels, and I watch Canadian Prepper and Survival Prepper for Normal People and, and uh, E.T. Prepper and, and uh, Reality Survival and TV, Lord Humongous, uh, Prepper Logic, all those. I, I watch a bunch of them. And I'm always trying to glean this much information that will help me in the shit hit the fan situation. Um, I, I, I forego watching regular TV so that I can have time to look at all these videos to make sure that I have as good of a chance of survival as that I can have. Now, I realize that I'm, I'm older, I'm not in the best shape, but that doesn't mean that I'm just going to 
you know, cock up my toes and die. So um, that I don't want to do. Now, that being said, I'm one of those people that probably end up being more of a lone wolf. Um, about a 50-50 chance of that because, that being said, my son is in the Army. Um, he's an Army combat medic. So if the shit hit the fan and we were together, we're all good. He's already got his gear. Uh, if the shit hits the fan and he's on deployment or on maneuvers or out training somewhere for 30 days and I'm here by myself... There's nobody in this whole town I know, really, other than my son. Um, so, therefore, I would kind of be on my own. If he was recalled to go help somewhere because of a shit-hit-the-fan situation, then I would still be alone. So, I have to prep like I'm going to be alone and hope that I'm with him. Hope that I fall in with people that are, you know, bad guys. Okay? I have a lot of skills. I can break horses. I can train horses. I can raise livestock. I can uh, milk a cow, a goat, raise chickens, ducks, geese, gardens. I've had a huge garden in Oklahoma. It was probably two acres. Um, I know a little bit about growing food. Um, I know how to make butter. I've totally failed at making cheese, so don't laugh at me. I have done some canning, but not much. Um, I have a lot of skills that can be used in a post-SHTF situation farther down the road, depending on how long it lasts. Now, there's different types of SHTF situations. There's short-term, long-term, permanent, okay? Um, short-term being, you know, a tornado comes through and tears up the local power plant. Long term, you know, uh, major earthquake hits California and half of it slides into the ocean. Okay, forever, SHTF, uh, five AMP as AMPs go off above the United States just about the time Yellowstone blows. Okay, there's there's different levels of SHTF, and if you plan for the big one, the little ones are no trouble. People say, and I heard, you know, I had somebody, I saw somebody uh, on a video just today talking about another YouTuber that was saying don't worry about the big stuff well and he and he <laughs> and he was right the guy was a did the guy was an idiot you worry about the big stuff because if you worry about the big stuff and the little stuff happens you don't sweat it because you've got it covered okay so that's my two cents on the matter I'm gonna make another video on my add-on kit which is also going to carry my cordage food different things else I need um, I'll probably do that tomorrow or the next day. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, bomb you guys with videos every day. I could come up with one twice a day if I really wanted to, but I, I try to, I'm trying to make my videos to where it doesn't bombard you with me. Um, I just want everybody to be prepared because if you're not prepared and SHTF happens, do you really want to see your little kid? Freeze the desert star. Do you really want to see your brother or sister killed or raped or murdered? Do you really want to see your parents die because you didn't prepare? Okay? Or grandparents or great grandparents. Because we don't just prepare just for ourselves. We prepare for our family. I'm prepared because I'm I, I love my son. Okay? If anything that I have could help him live, you think I wouldn't give it over? Right now. Guaranteed, that fast. He'd have it. I'd just hand it to him. And he'd probably do the same for me. I have no doubt about that. But I have to prepare like I might not have him around me when it happens because he does work. He is in the Army. And he's, you know, he's gone a lot. So I have to pretend that I have, I'm going to be alone and hope that I'm not. So if you guys would like, comment, and subscribe, share with me any ideas or, or, or opinions that you have, I would certainly appreciate it. Please watch for my video on my uh, third and fourth bag. I might do those as separate videos. I don't know. This, this video is running way too long. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I really do. Uh, please come back and check on me every once in a while. Thanks.